clearing up some chicken carnage, which they'll just do again later anyway, won't they? Yes, they Good morning, Phoebe. How are you feeling, Pickle? <laughs> In answer to my question, snotty. You can hear Barack. Barack is in the background. Dan's watching a documentary about Barack Obama. What do you think about swimming and PQA today? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay. Chilled out weekend. Uh, Pot stickers for dinner? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go and get the eggs. Bibi's going to come and get them. By the way, in case you are wondering about my jumper that I wear all the time, I have two of them and they're identical. There are my at-home cosy comfy jumpers so when one's in the wash I've always got the other one. <laughs> And I'm wearing this and only this today because I want to be cosy and comfy. And I'll show you Mum's amazing designer outfit that she has. On. First of all, we have slip on the shoes with dinosaur socks, moving up to pink moon leggings with a jumper that says starry eyed. Right, let me... Look at them! I want you to film the eggs, Mum. Three eggs. And lots of poo. Daddy's going to do the poo pick. <coughs> You're ready. <laughs> the biggest one is probably Peggy's. That's a big one. Oh, wow. hello! <laughs> I do not have seed. You're not coming out. He is coming out. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Cloud. That's my toes. I tell you when the other day I made an egg sandwich and then the next bit oh, yeah. was me wrapping up my presents and it, it, the way I'd edited it, it looked like I was wrapping up my egg sandwich. <laughs> right, here's one of the plates. We've got to get all of these bits together and then once it's all together we can give it to the charity shop, can't we? Yeah, okay. Oh look, he's like granny made. Oh, it's a lemon meringue pie. Granny didn't make that. Granny made it? Yeah. I thought you got it from that lady. No, the lady from the boot fair made oh, the, the burger. burger. Yeah. Granny made the lemon meringue pie. We have to keep the knitted ones. Yeah, we have to keep the knitted ones. to Saturday. It's not my favourite day of the week, Saturdays. We're not doing our usual running around today because everyone's, Phoebe's still feeling snotty and obviously Lily is isolating. So we're going to spend the day at home. They've just been vegging out, watching a bit of telly at a distance. Phoebe is dramatically coughing in the living room. I'm about to make them some lunch because it is 12.30. I've been tidying and cleaning the kitchen. Still got a fair bit to do. And I've been sorting out some cupboards in the living room. We've been putting together and um, pulling out some toys that they don't um, want anymore. Um, things like 
um, tea sets, old plastic tea sets. So I've given them all a wash and I'm now drying them and they'll go to the charity shop later in the week. I don't have to isolate by the way because um, I uh, fall into the category, I've tested negative for, on a PCR test and I am double vaccinated. Same goes for Phoebe, because not because she's double vaccinated, but because she's under uh, under 18. And the same for Dan, because he's also tested negative and he's double vaccinated. That is the uh, rules here in England. It might be different elsewhere in the UK. It might be different elsewhere in the world. I had a few questions in the comments. So first of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much over the last couple of days for all your lovely well wishes for Lilia and for Phoebe and for all of us. Um, after she got a positive result. It was really kind of you to take the time to leave such lovely messages and, and quite a few of you said you're going through similar things like family members or yourself or you know parents. So I hope, um, I hope you're all doing okay as well. I hope it's not affecting you too badly. Uh, Lilia's basically it's like a chesty cold. So we're very lucky there. Uh, and I had a few questions so I thought I'd take just five minutes to answer them. So um, one of the questions we had was, from a few people, was, is Lilia vaccinated? No, neither of the children are vaccinated. And that is because at the moment, at least where we are, um, they are vaccinating 16 years and over. Um, children aged 12 to 15 are due to be offered um, va a vaccine um, in the autumn, but haven't been yet. I wouldn't expect it would be until after the October half term. It will be done at school and they'll notify us and they, uh, the children can choose whether they want to have it or not. And I think Lilia's done a lot of thinking and chatting to us about it. And I think she's definitely um, going to go ahead and have her vaccination, but she hasn't had it yet. Cause Lilia's 15, she's only 15. And Phoebe is 10. So she, I don't know what the plans are for that age group, but certainly at the moment there are no plans uh, here anyway to vaccinate 10 year olds. Um, and what was the other thing? Oh, the, a few people asked about the whole thing around testing and um, how that all works. Well, I can only tell you what we're told to do. So, so for example, a few weeks ago, Dan tested positive on a lateral flow test. He had mild symptoms. He did a lateral flow test. We have lots of lateral flow tests here at home because um, Lilia has to test twice a week in order to go. She's a secondary school student and they are required to test twice a week and report the results. So we had lots of tests in the house. He did one of those. It came back positive. And when you report a positive lateral flow test, the track and trace website tells you to immediately go and get a PCR test. He did. That came back positive and the track and trace system then notifies close contacts. Uh, so we got an email saying, as we live with him, we all have to go and have PCR tests, which we did. The same thing happened with Lilia. She had mild symptoms. She did a lateral flow test. It was positive and Dan booked her in um, for a PCR test and they offered him one when he took her to the test site as well. But they're fully aware of when he last had his one, when he last had COVID, when his isolation period was and offered him one anyway, which he obviously did. When hers came back positive, we again got notified and told to go and get a PCR test because we were close contacts. And that's why, that's, that's why we're just basically following what we are told to do by the NHS, track and trace. And today actually Dan had a phone call from them, um, just going through all the places Lily has been over the past week, uh, just in case they need to alert anyone. And that's how it works. We're just basically following, following the rules and doing what we're told to do. Dan's just walked into the kitchen. He's been upstairs studying. Dan's studying for his uh, CIPD qualification. Level five. Uh, what were the other questions? Oh yes, um, someone asked, do the neighbors know that their cat comes in? <laughs> yes, they do. So the cat that you see here, her name is Mia. She's an old lady. She's 13 years old. And next door a couple of years ago, got a cockapoo who was lovely and she doesn't like it. She's a very gentle cat and she's never given the dog a swipe, so I think he bothers her. And they have done everything they can. They've given her the run of upstairs. She's a well-loved, well-fed, absolutely adored cat, and they love her. And they worry that um, she's a, a nuisance to us because she keeps coming 
over and we keep saying you know she's not at all we love having her she's only allowed in the kitchen she's not allowed anywhere else in the house because you know we, we don't have a cat she never spends the night here and we never feed her she goes home um but she just comes here for a sleep get away a bit of peace and quiet and um and then a few people were concerned about COVID being passed on through petting the cat. Lilia, I think the first time she's ever really touched Lilia was the other day when I filmed her tickling her chin. And that's because Lilia's quite nervous of animals. Um, so she's, she, she is warming to her, um, but she's generally quite nervous of animals, even gentle animals like Mia. And the chicken she's quite nervous of, but also she's really allergic to cats. <laughs> so she will never pick her up, for example. And actually, Mia's not here today. Phoebe's feeling pretty snotty, aren't you? Mm. I'm going to make you some lunch now. You said that like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I know. I just wanted to dry these first. Sorry, I'm not working quick enough. Mm. No, I'm not working quick enough. For the, I think they can't get the star. <laughs> uh, what other questions were there? Uh, oh, Suzanne, you asked about a shiny thing next to my sink, but I have no idea what, what you're talking about. Oh, she needs the plate. There's a plate next to the sink on the wall. I don't know what you mean. Is it on the window set? Is it this? Is it my spray bottle that I use for my air plant maybe that I got in Aldi's and doesn't work very well? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to, oh, and we're gonna do the egg. We're gonna do the egg, the big egg. The giant egg. We're going to crack the egg open to see. Lots of people suggested it might be a double yolker, and we did wonder that ourselves. Someone said Peggy must be channeling her inner duck because it's so huge. So we're going to see. Phoebe's just the other side of the window now, holding cloud. Oh. That was the other thing I wanted to say. I have just remembered. I've had a few comments saying that you're, you've just found me and you're new subscribers. So welcome. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for finding me and deciding to stick with it. I really appreciate you being here and just, yeah, it's really nice. There's loads of people. To, there's lots of lovely people to watch. I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm just going to say thank you for subscribing. Thank you, new and old. I'm going to show you what I can see through the window. Right, we're going to find out if the massive egg is a double yolker. Lilia's coming in to watch from a distance. Right, Lilia, stand over oh, there. I'm so excited. Right, stand over there. Everyone ready? Yeah. If it's not, we're going to be so disappointed. Yeah. Yes! yes! You can't see! You can't see. <laughs> it's Peggy. It's a double yolka. Amazing. Good. Someone's got to have eggs for lunch now. Oh, I'll have a fried egg on toast. A fried double yolka egg. Fried double yolka egg. <laughs> nose blowing behind me. I've been putting out some Halloween decorations so this is what I put out a couple of days ago and I've got my clay witchy feet which I made. I've got my just a little origami star. Ooh, origami star. Got my autumn candle there which smells lovely and then I've just got these cheap and cheerful glittery pumpkins which catch the candle light nicely and I've still got my, my pillar candle there. 
I'm not quite sure. There's something about it that I'm not liking. I think it probably needs more orange pumpkins, but you know, it will look good later when it's all lit up. And then down here I've got on the mantle, or on the, um, oh you can't really see because of all the sun streaming in. I've got my pumpkin, my knitted pumpkin there. I'm wondering actually if it might be better down here. Oh, I'm not sure. We'll leave it there for now. And then I've got my, um, my little cheap and cheerful sparkly strictly candle. Oh, that's looking glittery. And then these two little witchy ped dolls that my friend Gaina, who's Tales from Cuckoo Land, made. So they're out as well. I'll probably play about with it a bit. And then I've got loads more stuff that will go out nearer to actual Halloween. These are just early, early Halloween decorations. Over here because the COVID one is over there. Um, I promise, I promise you, I have brushed my hair today. It just doesn't look like it. Uh, it's about quarter past three, and I am about to start um, preparing dinner. So I thought I'd just show you what we're going to have. Um, so this book we got from the library before lockdown, and then because lockdown closed all the libraries, we got to keep it for an extended amount of time. So when I did eventually have to give it back, I bought myself my own copy. It's by Guoclin One, and it's the Veggie Chinese Takeaway. And there are two recipes in particular that have become an absolute staple in our uh, eating repertoire. <laughs> that makes no sense. They're favourites, they're family favourites now. And that is the chili tofu ramen. Let's see if there's pictures. Chili tofu ramen. And the pot stickers. Pot stickers. Whoa, that's a bit close for comfort. And then, uh, so I'm gonna do that now. It takes quite a lot of work to get all the vegetables chopped and ready and cooked for the pot stickers. The chili tofu ramen is actually very simple and quite quick, but what, I'm do, what I do is when I make the filling, I make tons of it because it freezes really well, which means if we want it just even midweek, all we need to do is make the dough for the pot stickers and it's actually not that difficult to do. So there's gonna be a, a lot of chopping right now. So I'm gonna get my iPad, put on some Vlogtobers and get that sorted. I feel like I've been talking a lot today and that this is now going to be really long. So we'll do a bit of cooking and then we're going to get ready for Strictly. I'm feeling really anxious because Saturday nights, just Saturdays generally, we see everyone's at home and it all just feels like a lot of people being around and a couple of doors up, they're having a party, which they're absolutely allowed to do. I've never heard them in all the years they've lived there. There's, I think they might have either got married or had a baby. There was lots of people in fancy dress. Um, and you don't need to know this, but that kind of thing makes me anxious. Yeah. I like Sundays. Sundays are my favourite day. Everyone seems to be going slow on Sundays. What am I talking about? That is the strongest onion I have ever chopped in my life. It's actually hurting the back of my throat. So Did you get it? Yeah. Have you got a bit of paper? Not yet. He's absolutely flipping huge. Where did he come from? Under the... Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Right, if you... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If you don't like spiders... Look away now. Seriously look away for the next 10 seconds, okay? Oh my goodness, that was in my house. Yeah.
That is not a normal spider. Well, it is. It's just a very big normal spider. What? I am torn. I'm not even... Do you know what? I don't even want to stand where it came out of. I am, I am traumatised by that. That was in my house. If Dan hadn't spotted it, it would be in my house and I wouldn't know. Where did it, it crept where did, into where did your you bed. It? it went into the, the hedge over by the social club and crawled off quite happily. Oh my goodness. That could have gone into your ears. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was like the biggest spider I've ever seen anywhere. That was the biggest spider we've ever had in our house. On that note, I'm going to finish cooking. So I've done all, it's taken me just over an hour to do all of the chopping and get the mixture ready. It's now cooling and Dan is doing the dough for the pot stickers whilst I get the broth ready for the chilli ramen. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to get changed back into my pyjamas. I've only got half changed out of them all day. The girls are both having showers and freshening up. And then we're going to eat our pot stickers and watch Strictly. So I'm going to say bye now so I've got time to edit this all together and enjoy the evening. And thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you again tomorrow if we haven't been eaten by giant spiders. <laughs> bye. <laughs>